Dementors are among the foulest creatures that walk this earth. They infest the darkest, filthiest places. They glory in decay and despair. They drain peace, hope and happiness out of the air around them. These creatures, Dementors, are a personification of depression, based on J.K. Rowling's own experience with the illness. This is well known, but I still think Rowling's metaphor for depression deserves a closer look. Because depression is the leading cause of disability worldwide. It's extremely common, it can lead to fatal outcomes, but we still don't really know how to talk about it. Because explaining depression isn't easy, it's an insidious disease. It's like a parasite that masquerades as the truth, convincing us that the world was always this bleak. Unlike hallucinations or mania, depression doesn't lend itself to spectacle, it's just opaque. So compelling accounts of depression are rare, but J.K. Rowling succeeded in dramatizing the battle with depression. And she did this in such a nuanced, clinically accurate, and most importantly actionable way that I think her metaphor should be taught in Psych 101 classes everywhere. So here are six ways Dementors help explain depression. Get too near a Dementor and every good feeling, every happy memory will be sucked out of you. Professor Lupin is making an important distinction here. Dementors don't necessarily bring sadness. Instead, they take away joy and hope. Diagnostic criteria for depression highlight this absence of happiness or anhedonia. While depression involves feeling sad, it's this lack of positive emotion that differentiates it from normal sadness. As J.K. Rowling put it in an interview, it is that absence of being able to envisage that you will ever be cheerful again. The absence of hope. That very deadened feeling, which is so very different from feeling sad. Sad hurts, but it's a healthy feeling. It's a necessary thing to feel. Depression is very different. I felt weird though. Like I'd never be cheerful again. Dementors make people feel like nothing will ever be good again. Depression does the same. Aaron Beck, the author of one of the classic diagnostic questionnaires for depression, believed that negative views about the future are a key cognitive element of the illness. This is what's called Beck's negative triad. And this part is the one that really locks people into the loop. Why look for help? Why try to make anything better? Why fight it if you know nothing will ever get better? This hopeless feeling can make breaking out of depression as hard as breaking out of Azkaban. The prisoners lose all hope of a brighter future, so they don't even try to escape from their dark cells. For that was the terrible power of the Dementors, to force their victim to relive the worst memories of their life and drown powerless in their own despair. Dementors affect their victims' memories, and sadness does something similar. Human memory has its own rather complicated sorting technique. When we make a memory, we encode it, sort of like one might tag a post on social media. The music, the smell, the weather, the location. Then as we go about life, our brain helpfully suggests memories that are relevant to our current state and environment. Mood and emotion tags are especially important. Your current mood acts almost like a filter, affecting what you notice, how you interpret things, and what you recall. And experiments have shown that when already in a sad mood, people are more likely to recall sad memories. This effect is called mood congruent memory, and it's one of the ways depression and dementors hold power over their victims. For a depressed person, the world seems cold and gray as is, and then the memories that come to mind further support this view, convincing them that everything has always been this terrible. You've no idea, said Hagrid quietly. Never been anywhere like it. Thought I was going mad. Kept going over horrible stuff in my mind. The day I got expelled from Hogwarts, day my dad died, day I had to let Norbert go. His eyes filled with tears. So here Hagrid is describing how when he was sent to Azkaban in Harry's third year, he kept rehashing sad memories and unsolvable problems in his mind over and over and over. Hagrid was ruminating. This is a thought process well known to clinical psychologists. In fact, some call it a hallmark of depressed thinking. The term rumination is derived from the Latin rumina, which means chewed over. It refers to how cows chew, swallow, regurgitate, and then re-chew their food in a cycle. For a depressed person, this kind of circular brooding can become habitual, almost comforting, and can really hinder recovery. It has nothing to do with weakness said Professor Lupin sharply, as though he had read Harry's mind. 
the Dementors affect you worse than the others because there are horrors in your past that the others don't have. Dementors don't discriminate. They can attack anyone, good or bad, strong or weak, muggle or wizard, but there are certain factors that make one especially susceptible to their powers. The same is true for depression. It's been shown that experiencing poverty, illness, grief, or trauma can all increase the likeliness of becoming depressed at some point in life. Something similar happens with the Dementors. Harry witnessed his parents being murdered when he was just one year old, and then he had to live with the Dursleys, and we see he is affected by the Dementors much more severely than his peers, who haven't experienced that level of trauma and neglect. There's more that links Dementors with depression, from the fact that both inspire suicidal ideation, to the fact that chocolate, the ultimate comfort food, helps a bit with both. But the key element of Rowling's metaphor is the actionable part, the what can be done about it part, the cure that Rowling built into the narrative. The Patronus is a kind of positive force, a projection of the very things that the Dementor feeds upon. And how do you conjure it? With an incantation, which will work only if you are concentrating with all your might on a single, very happy memory. Dementors are fended off by Patronuses, luminous protectors made of hope and joy and love. Of course, Banishing depression takes more than a single happy memory, but with advances in neuroimaging technology, we can now prove that depression can be affected by thought. We still don't know for sure what thoughts actually are. Are they immaterial like Descartes believed, or can they be summed up by measurable electrical and chemical activity in the brain? Is depression just a chemical imbalance, as pharmaceutical producers would have us believe? Or is it something more existential? These issues are still debated in the psychological community. We just don't know for sure yet. But what we do know is that changing thought patterns can actually change brain structure. Certain types of talk therapy have been shown to be very effective at this. It's mind-boggling that changing how you think can change how your brain scan looks, crossing the line between immaterial subjective experiences and our physical cortexes. It's really, truly magic. At the end of The Prisoner of Azkaban, the Dementors are closing in on Harry and Sirius, until suddenly a powerful Patronus comes galloping across the lake to save them. Who helped them? The silhouette of the man who sent the Patronus reminds Harry of his father. Later, when Harry and Hermione use the time turner to go back to the same point in time and save Buckbeak, Harry waits for the savior to appear, hoping it's his dad. But nobody comes. Then it dawns on Harry. The person who sent the Patronus wasn't his dad. Expecto! It was Harry who had the power to battle a hundred Dementors. We do not need magic to transform our world. We carry all the power we need inside ourselves already. We have the power to imagine better. I think the lesson of J.K. Rowling's metaphor is this. Depression is not an inherent part of us. It is an external parasitic force that has no truth in itself and can and must be fought. And the determination to fight it with love and happiness comes from within ourselves. It's really hard and it's scary, but it's possible. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please subscribe. If you didn't like this video, honestly, I'd still love a subscription. As a bonus, I'm including some of my favorite books sort of in and around the topic of depression. They're all very different. Um, Noonday Demon, wonderful book about depression. Option B is about facing adversity and loss and grief, but it really, it talks about how, you know, trauma brings about growth among other things. Um, the How of Happiness, it's about how happiness really doesn't, it's not as connected to our life events as we think. And uh, Sylvia Plath's letters are just more about someone who was struggling with depression, but was nevertheless very, very articulate <laughs> and brilliant, obviously. Tune in, subscribe. I'm going to be making more content. Um, see you soon.